Bob. This has been a long time coming. The series that is considered the most mug-crunchingly frustrating, the fan base considered the maddest of the mad, and the laziest of comparisons used by twats. Yes, it is Dark Souls, my single most requested topic. Which is appropriate, seeing as this is my single most favorite of six. So wank material. Oh. If I didn't know better. I think you have feelings for me. Oh, stop it, you. But anyway, what better time than the release-ish of the latest and final installment of the series? And this is indeed the final one. Now that it's over, FromSoft can now move on and make some um, fucking mech games or whatever. That's not a joke, by the way. This is- this is an actual- this is an actual thing. It is literally the Dark Souls of mech- <laughs> Uh... So fuck it, let's do this. A video covering the entire Souls franchise. Yeah, that's right. All three of them. Yeah, I'm not counting these two because A, they're not canon and B, uh, I, I haven't played them, all right? It's not that I haven't wanted to, it's just that I you know, can't afford a PS4. Plug. Bit of a shame, there's a bunch of games I want to play and discuss and make videos about. Plug, plug, plug. You know, like Melbourne and Jack and Daxter, Jack and Daxter 2, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball 3. So, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. We'll go through them chronologically and go through which did what best. Which I know is kind of like saying out of these three cocaine powered gods, Jobs, which did you find most satisfactory? But whatever, this is my right, bitch. Let's do this! But first, let's start off with a very simple and broad statement. The story of all three games, just like my sense of self worth, is non existent. There is no story. And no, I'm not talking about the lore or the, the side quest, the Vati Vidi, blah blah blah. Yes, it's all, that's all excellence. I'm talking about you, the protagonist, your journey. It is always the same. Stop me if this sounds Sounds familiar. <clears throat> You wake up in a place. You don't know how you ended up in that place. You wander around until you find the main hub area where you are told to defeat the Elite Four. And once you've wandered around enough and collected all of the gym badges, you must then defeat the final boss and become the Pokemon World Champion. Why does everyone who talks about Dark Souls sound like this? So yeah, the structure of these games is more or less always the same and, you know, nothing wrong with that. It's like a comfortable, well-loved little blankie that you've had for many years and which you occasionally give a nice warm hug and a little wank in. It's okay to keep it as long as you give it a wash every now and again to freshen it up. Otherwise it goes all manky and your parents start planning to disown you. But anyway, now that we've established the plot of these games, we it should make analysis the easier. So let's uh, let's on with it, you cuck. First up, Dark Souls One, best PC port, 1998. The game that started it all, technically. Sleeper sales. You are the chosen un. Dead. You're off to do things and th the stuff in the land of Lordran, a dead and decrepit kingdom that is as bleak as a cancer ward in the middle of Detroit. And just like a cancer ward, everywhere you go, there is an endless atmosphere of dread and despair, and is perfectly suited for the delightfully satisfying combat. And fucking hell, this is a terrible simile. But really, though, this is what sells the game. Hell, the entire franchise, the combat, which is the tightest shit and you don't think so you can fuck a cactus just don't bring up hitboxes and of course the setting you the stalwart hero wandering through a dead land slaughtering your way through legions of cancer patients so that you can reach a kiln and set yourself on fire to save all the people you've killed or is everyone immortal or is it just some I, I don't know shut up shut up it's perfect praise the fuck dark souls are perfect praise that fucking sun well, let's get real here you all know what's good. It's a special kind of difficulty that, at first, to an outsider seems obnoxious, but truly it prizes pragmatism and knowledge over anything else. The more you know what you're doing, the easier a time you'll have, and that's why the second playthrough was always the best. And that's also why that if you ever get stuck on anything, just watch a fucking walkthrough made by people I'm pretty sure have never experienced an orgasm in their entire life. Yes, I know this is all about exploring and discovering, but 
Come on, your time is valuable, who gives a fuck? I mean, it's all fucking Bobby once you've tuned into that psychotic frequency, and once they have, boom, that's it, you're done. You're erect and willing, however, passing through that threshold requires a robust tolerance for bullshit, because the in-game player training is worth the fuck. Hell, sometimes all sanity and common sense just wanders off for a cheeky wank break. Like how you access the secret bonus level by returning to the starting area to pick up a doll to jump through and painting fucking <laughs> But besides from the occasional, okay, somewhat prevalent obtuseness, there is really very little to complain about. Well, besides the user interface and the broken PvP and the entire second half and the Lost Eyes on the third level, which really would have been better if they'd gotten rid of it completely and replaced it with an empty room with a letter of apology in the middle written in the blood of the developer who honorably disemboweled themselves. But now I'm just nitpicking, kind of. Overall, a lot of what I say about this game, the combat, the atmosphere, the obtuseness, the broken PvP, could very much be applied to further installments, saving a few tweaks and adjustments, because this is the baseline. This is the t what set the templates. Okay, this is the game that refined the templates for from to follow and rigidly stick to in all future games. Nothing wrong with that. As I said, it's what people want. Although, I am glad they're gonna try some new things for the future. From's a good company. Everyone likes them. They make good shit. I don't know how to segue from here. Uh, I've mentioned a lot in this video, but I haven't mentioned the idea of adding an easy mode. Just something that would make it a little easier to initiate new players, to ease them into it. I suppose it's a fairly reasonable request. Although it does seem a bit weird, seeming as there's always been an easy mode. It's called Dark Souls 2. Yeah, yeah we've already laid... Laid additional layers of groundwork for the series, and here comes Dark Souls 2 to saunter in and lay down on the floor and blow bubbles with its spit. Look, of course, I should definitely clarify this. Dark Souls 2 is a great fucking game. When you compare it to other mere mortal games. Standing alone, it's fantastic. In comparison to the rest in the series, I mean, it did fix a lot. There's a lot of great with the game. There's also a lot of fucking flappery. So let's... Into this. You are the bearer of the curse who has ventured into the land of Dranlaic, a slightly less dead and decrepit kingdom where people are actually capable of moving more than four directions. Seriously, the gameplay is an infinite chopping in improvement from the last one. And the user interface finds finally looks like it was designed by someone who's actually seen a file explorer before in their life. You see, it's laid out in tiles so that you can see everything and it's nice and neat. However, if you break it down into a list, then what the fucking hell palace am I looking at? Seriously though, from a gameplay standpoint, toppy tippers. The combat is tighter, except for the hitboxes. Those are worse. The PvP has been upgraded from cancer to... Cancer minus one, and the content is splurged all over the place, spread sloppily over the walls and ceilings, meaning there's a lot of it. But besides that, and a few other things, <coughs> Okay, a lot of people give this game a lot of shits. There's plenty of reasons why, like the level design, which was weird and linear and bleh. In the last game, the level design was some tip-top tight shit. Everything was connected one way or another. You'd look out of the gorgeous view because you're told to, you good little sheep. And you'd be like, yeah, I was just there. Oh, I've done some shit. And there would be doors and shortcuts that you unlock to act as achievement checkpoints that would fill you with determination and your trousers with spunk. However, in two... Fuck, A to B, too easy. Just uh, fucking get there. Tree giants, everybody will figure out what they're supposed to do. Teleport and bonfires, stampy, 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 stampy. What are we gonna put between them? I don't fucking care, they'll play it anyway. Elevator at the top of a mountain? You go up it and you end up in LS Springs? Yeah, that makes sense. But seriously, the level design was kinda drab, with environments that were confusingly diverse. Sometimes
sometimes changing season and location and time of day by walking through a fucking door. And textures that looked like the designer had just begun a sordid love affair with the clone brush. But this is all aesthetic, the places you go through. But what about the things in the places you go through? Specifically the bitey, stabby people that you may know as enemies. This is the other thing that people take offense to. Because the enemies in this game are mostly exclusively populated by just blokes in armor, strutting around, doing nothing but abusing their knight privilege. <laughs> <laughs> But Sironsele, the enemy variety was a smidge on the lazy side. And the bosses, oh sphincter the bosses. I think they were trying to go for this thing where they'd have a boss approximately every eight seconds, but most of them were kind of shit. But similarly, were there even any that would make you jump up and scream, yay, my nipples were perky for having beaten this. Come on, what was there? The angry slug? Some rats, blatant liar, two blatant liars, hole in the floor, and to a lesser extent, giant lava demon? I mean, I suppose you've got the alone knight and the fume knights and maybe a few other absurdly themed knights. But anyway, what's the final verdict? It's more Dark Souls, did some things right, did some things wrong. I've played it six times, you fucking tell me, IGN! Pay me to say nice things out of ten. Segway to the next one! Okay, finally, we're here. The one you're probably actually here for, Dark Souls 3. Or to give it a more appropriate title, Fan fiction. And look, I'm sure you could figure out by now that, yes, this, I think this is the best in the series, there's no doubt about that, but, but it's kind of like Toy Story 3 in this respect, where it's the best out of all of them, but it's also the most redundant, because it's just going over the same points as the previous installments. But you kind of forgive it for that, because you can't stop flicking your pussy over it. But syphilously, it's good. It's very good. So, you are the unkindled one, or the ashen one, or the unkindled ash, I don't know, it's all the same. And you are in the land of Lothric, because of course you are. And right off the bat, you see that the atmosphere is nothing short of feral, off the deep end. Fucking festy can. And right off the bat, you see the most disgusting, grotesque imagery you could ever behold. An inconsistent frame rate. Oh no! Yeah, on the Xbox One, there's plenty of technical and network issues that, you know, aren't really a deal breaker, but they're certainly worth fucking mentioning. But for real, real, it starts off pretty good with the first boss that doesn't suck. That's right, exploding cancer knight's gonna fuck your shit down, fool! Except, except you do beat him. It's a pretty standard practice, actually. And then from there, you make your way to the starting area from the first game, and the blacksmith from the first game, and NPCs, and bosses, and enemies, and even two bosses that were apparently a crack ship OTP has now become canon! Oh my jeepers! But Sarah Hosley, this is all supposed to play up the nostalgia for veteran players, which honestly, to pull this over to a broader point, I bloody hate the concept of nostalgia. Because when you break it down, it's basically you just saying, Oh my god, it is a thing that I recognize. I'm a buster nut. However, seeing as this is the last game, they are allowed to be a bit cheeky about it. And there was only one time where I thought that they went a bit too far with it. DID YOU REALLY HAVE TO BRING THIS FUCKING SHIT BACK, YOU SICK BASTARDS? I'ma let it slide, though. It's good. Content's good. There's not a lot of it, but, you know, it fills the space. It's a quality over quantity thing, you know? You can see this most in the bosses, where there aren't many of them, but it's rare to come across one that doesn't make you go, Wow! I'm just a little bit moist right now. Well, except for the insane monk posse, but you know, there's always one, isn't there? My favorite was probably the Abyss Watchers, because they remind me of that Frederick Nietzsche's quote. You know, watch thee not into the Abyss, lest the Abyss will... Turn you into a berserk ripoff. Uh, the final boss is great. It's a lovely ending note. Uh, not really from a narrative standpoint, because it's really just like, oh, you're beating the elite four. <laughs> you're done. It's more the boss itself. 
really good. You gotta learn your patterns and shit. Although I'm pretty sure, based on what I know in the lore, that it's as hard as it is because it's just an amalgamation, a combined intelligence of all the bullshit PvP exploits that everybody used. We brought this on ourselves, didn't we? But, um, yeah, that's it. Overall, it's really good. In my opinion, it's the best of the series. Don't know how else I can expand on this without repeating myself. It's a worthy final swan song for a much beloved series. And people loved it because... I don't know. It's, it's probably a, it's a metaphor for life in the end, really. You're faced with a seemingly impossible challenge, and you try it, and you fail. Then you try it again, and you fail. And you keep trying again and again, and you keep f fuck it. You keep failing. And you keep saying, How the fuck am I supposed to do this shit? And you see all the bloodstains on the ground of all the other people who kept failing, and it's like, What the fuck? They couldn't do it. How the hell am I supposed to do this shit? But you know what? You stick to it. You learn. You observe. You maybe even get some support from your friends. And you know what? You figure it out. You overcome it. You get to where you want to be. Because you understand that failure is not getting knocked down. It's refusing to get back up again. So that you can get to that amazing chest ahead! Yeah, boy! Good night, everybody! <laughs>